Did I somewhat get your name right? Very close, Deuster House. Okay. Thank you very much to all the committee members and to the chair and vice chair and for Senator Stewart for introducing this bill. My name is Katrina Deusterhouse. I'm a resident of Martin County, Florida, a small business owner and an empowered survivor of sexual assault. This is a trigger warning. I would like to give notice now. I'm going to be describing actual violence. So if anybody has PTSD or would be disturbed by that, I'd ask that they leave the room now. I joined Rain's Speakers Bureau and the sexual assault response teams of Martin County, Palm Beach County, and St. Lucie County to advocate for victims and survivors and to educate people on the realities of sexual violence, which is also why I'm here today. My memories of being assaulted are like horrifying clips from a movie that open when the men around me began at a party in high school arguing over who would get to go first and who would get sloppy seconds. I didn't understand what they meant. Flash. Everybody has left the room except the virgin. He drops, my pant he drops his pants and comes at me. I claw my nails into his back, but he doesn't stop. He's raping me. Flash. I have become a dot on the ceiling. Flash. Watch out, says the virgin to rapist number two. She's a scratcher. Flash, I can't breathe. I open my eyes and it's the one named Taylor, the most difficult to forget. He's laughing and with one hand closing tighter around my throat and his other plugging my nose, he tells me to open my mouth so he can rape me there too. My responses and memories of that terrible night can be explained by how the brain often responds during traumatic experiences, from sexual assault to military combat. As experts who understand these brain processes can explain, suddenly realizing the men around me were going to rape me activated a, a defense circuitry in my brain, which immediately took over. First, it caused me to freeze as I registered the impending attack, much like military military personnel do when that first round hit. I experienced another common reflexive response of many people in the face of trauma called dissociation. It felt unreal that I was being assaulted. I just spaced out. And when I became a spot on the ceiling, that was my mind escaping the intimate violence that my body could not. Afterwards, for many years, I blamed myself and I felt ashamed. I felt I had failed to resist the attack and it was my fault. And I was not the only one. After waiting years to report this assault because of this confliction that I felt inside me that I had internalized, the officers who took my report asked me, did I actually say the word no? Why didn't you fight harder? Why didn't you scream for help? Let me say for the record that how hard a victim fought should never be a factor in determining if the assault actually occurred. No wonder 85% of survivors never even report. It has been the cultural norm to blame survivors, as is evident in the way that I was ignorantly interrogated about my reactions to sexual assault. But science proves that reactions such as dissociation and freezing are actually consistent rather than disproving of it. There are neurobiological reasons for why I just sat there in shock and didn't object when I heard the men around me conspiring to rape me. There are neurobiological reasons for why I was frozen and I just sat there and didn't object or try to fight harder. Worst of all, after the traumatic interrogation I received when I came for help, I was told I was too late in my confusion, in all of our confusion. I was too late for justice. And I'm not the only one. This needs to change today. That's why I'm here, to give you proof as to why sometimes it takes time for survivors and our culture. 
I have heard from many other survivors that chose to never report because they feared the very reaction that I got from, from law enforcement. Victim blaming is so common. This needs to change. It's even tougher for survivors who lack the privilege of being an able-bodied, college-educated white person. Victim preference is a reality. This too needs to change. I'm only one in 10 people in the United States, 10%, who will have, who have, who will have survived an attempted or completed sexual assault. I'm one in 10. I don't wanna be one in 10 anymore. And the majority of rapists get off without jail time. Rape is the easiest violent crime to get away with in the United States, and this needs to change. The current statute is an arbitrary deadline that both penalizes survivors of sexual assault and protects offenders. This needs to change. The impact of the crime, including all those reasons that can, that can lead to delayed disclosure, including fear, distrust, shame, guilt, debilitating PTSD or escape into denial or addiction should never be what enables the perpetrator or perpetrators, in my case, to get away with the crime. We can do better than this. I'm only one of several survivors who have provided public testimony in support of this legislation because we've been denied justice. Terry Parsons, who couldn't be here today, but who spoke on February 18th before the Senate Criminal Justice Appropriations Subcommittee wanted me to share with you all that at 62 years of age, that day was the best day of her life. We were supported with unanimous votes from the subcommittee. Finally, someone listened, she said. And as Senator Gaynor said, Florida heard us. Terry and Donna Hedrick, the namesake, of the identical legislation for this bill in the House were, were both abused by their choir teacher at Oak Ridge High School in the 70s. And more than 40 years later, these brave women connected over their shared abuse and confronted their perpetrator, obtaining a confession from him at, at, at a diner. They brought a retired cop with them who sat nearby to witness the meeting even though our current statute of limitations means these ladies will never get justice and their perpetrator still walks free. He had more victims too. He still collects a pension. These women couldn't be here today, but they wanted me to remind you that unless you've been there, you have no idea how hard it is for survivors of sexual violence already. I had internalized our cultural blame before I even tried to report it. It's too late for myself and all the other survivors, the 29,000 who have added their names to the change petition that Donna Hendrick started, which helped bring this law before Senator Stewart, and many of whom shared their own stories. It's too late for us, but it's not too late to take action and secure justice for all minors in the future. Give survivors time to process these horrible acts and give our, our cultures and our community time to catch up to these understandings, time to understand what the science is now proving. Together, we can change the reality of sexual violence. And by passing Donna's law, we will be one step closer. So please, I ask you to support SB 170 and start making all these changes today Thank you for seeing and hearing me and for making the world a better place in Florida, at least, tomorrow. Thank you for your testimony. Um, Gary Hester um, with the Florida Police Chiefs Association, you are recognized.